Hello, welcome to Property Question Time. I'm Stephen Galpin and this is the programme where you can have your property related questions answered by our team of experts. And joining me today is the CEO of Debt Squared Group, Byron Krellin. Welcome. Hi Stephen. Hope you had a good trip in. Yeah, very good, thank you. Good. And John Howard, property developer, author, TV commentator and public speaker. Welcome to you, John. Thank you very much, Stephen. Good to be back. How was the trip from Ipswich? Uh, excellent, excellent. Less than an hour on the train. Well, just. Do you not drive in anymore? Don't tend to, because it's so easy to get to from Ipswich. Mm. You know, a lot mm. of people commute, of course, mm. every day. Okay. Or used to, anyway. Well, very good to have you both with us. Thank you both for coming in. And I think what we'll do is start straight away with the questions for Byron. Whilst high street vacant shops may be converted to residential <laughs> use, what about the empty shops in specialist arcades and shopping centres? These would be impossible to convert. So what do the experts think the future may hold for the owners and investors of these properties? Question. Yeah, and I, I, think, I think for me it's a case of can everybody just calm down? You know, I've got clients that have got tenants moving into properties. Their voids are higher than they should be, but, you know, pandemic. So... We accept that. We are, you know, we, it, to, to take a, a stat now, we shouldn't read too much into it because you know we've had an unbelievable yeah. scenario land on us and therefore we've had to deal with what, what, what we've got. And we've got small businesses, <laughs> big retailers going down. Uh, but in, in terms of you know, what is this like coming back, we've got tenants that are moving back into properties on our clients' portfolios. Um, I think what they've got to do in, in particular those kind of portfolios that you've mentioned in the question, it's it's about working smart. And, and we've seen landlords completely move away from the traditional, it's a lease through the managing agents. It's now monthly rents. It's two two months deposit, mm. monthly rent <coughs> thereafter, on a rolling arrangement, on a on a lease, six month lease, etc. And and so so but being really sort of clever and smart, working with local authorities. So much more flexible. Totally. Mm. Totally. Slightly more difficult in terms of when rent recovery goes through. Yeah. yeah, because yeah. you've got this sort of unique scenarios and arrangements being created. But you know, the, the key thing is for, for landlords and tenants is get businesses back open, get businesses in occupation of all different shapes and sizes. And I think, again, we have across the UK a number of that kind of portfolio. And we're, and we're seeing our clients work smart uh, we've, you know, there is a risk because probably above 50% now are what we would determine as high risk tenants because they're just new co's. So there's no trading history. So it's just, but it's <coughs> occupation. It's also trying to get people to have the confidence to get back shopping. I mean, I live in on the outskirts of Chester, and you know, I walk through Chester now, and it's and that's a beautiful, mad. And that's a beautiful city. Yeah, I mean, and great for shopping. It used it, to be. It, it is. I mean, you actually you, you walk through one of the, the the streets of Chester now, and it is. You can see it's had pain. Yeah. You know, you can see. You know, I remember that that used to be the sandwich shop. Yeah, you know, I remember that used to be the hairdressers. That but used like, to be. But, but like you said, back. I mean, back. that'll settle down. Yeah, absolutely. That'll settle yeah. down. And, and yeah. actually, to have less shops available is better. You know, there's 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 too much. Stop, really, too many shops. So if the shops in these town centres are reduced, yeah. then the ones that are left, people will be more competitive to take them. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, 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 it's all conducive to fresh new business, isn't yeah. it, really? Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. It's just a different accent, I suppose. And I think, and I think high streets are fighting back now. I think, I think, you know, as I say, I walked through Chester uh, two days ago and it felt like it was coming back alive again. It felt nice to walk back through. Do you know, I've been very sceptical about this business of the high streets dying all the time because if we're not careful, we'll go into the same old circle. We've talked about this before. You know, uh, well, there's the high street shops. Oh, they're not full. So let's convert them to residential. Yeah. You convert them to residential and everybody starts screaming there's no but, facilities. But, but also you know. a, lot of, a, lot of the, a lot of the shops don't, especially the ground floor I'm talking about, don't really work as residential. Mm. You know, they've got no front garden. They've got no back garden. They don't really work mm. as residential. Above the Yes, uh, and of course, first and second floors and above it is great for town centres because mm. you're putting people back into the town centre. But the actual, the ground floor shops, really, it's hard to make them attractive. Just on that point, John, there's something quite interesting that always, always concerns me, and I've never really got to the bottom of the answer. Wherever you have retail underneath residential, there's quite often a mortgage problem. 
Yes, on the first floor. On yeah. the first floor yeah. only normally. If it's right. a restaurant on the ground floor, then it really is a problem. If it's other, if it's another retail unit rather than uh, rather than a restaurant or takeaway, even worse, um, then actually you're probably okay. There are a number of building societies and, and lending institutions who will lend for buy to lets and so on on the first floors. Just not so many, and you'll pay a higher interest rate. Don't forget as well because there aren't mm. so many. Mm, interesting. Okay, right. Well, we'll move on to the second question, which is for you, John. The whole country seems to be experiencing labour shortages in transport, agriculture, and of course, construction, due to tighter immigration rules since Brexit. We're back on Brexit. And the return to their home country of many Eastern European workers. Do the panel think this will have a serious inflationary effect on the price of housing as labour costs and material costs are inevitably going to increase? That's a massive question. First of all, let me just say, as a Brexiteer, <laughs> <laughs> as Stephen knows, um, I, don't, the, I listened to a, a programme the other day that basically said that everyone's blaming Brexit for the lack of lorry drivers and so on at the moment. The truth is, that a lot of our lorry drivers are coming up to retirement um, and they are not being replaced by younger people because it's expensive to go and get your HGV. Older people, um, I can drive a seven and a half tonner, so can you, so can you probably, but for younger people, they, they can't drive a seven and a half tonner on their normal license. They've got to, they've got to take a test. And uh, this is hampering uh, new drivers coming in especially because of COVID and the, and the test centres haven't been open. So it is a, a lot of the, the, the transport side of things, the lorry, you're know, not having enough people and so on. Certainly with the transport, that, that's not just about Brexit. Now, in terms of inflation, I totally um, think that inflation will go between 5 and 10% because everybody I know um, is trying to get um, staff for, for restaurants and so on, having to pay them more. Yeah. Uh, gardeners, they want more. Cleaners, they want more. So, and of course, it, it's it's a spiralling effect, mm. isn't it? We've had very low inflation in this country for many, many years. Many years. Interest rates are going to have to go up a little bit, but they're inc ridiculously low anyway. Um, and the, and if you look, what happens normally, whatever happens in America happens here. And in America, I think the interest rate now is 5% plus. But they're saying it's short term because of building materials and so on, because with the building materials, there's no um, stockpiles. Because of COVID and everything else, there's no stockpiles. And until they can build those stockpiles up, they're going straight out of the factory, straight to the building so, site. So shall we try and answer the question then? Please do. What was which, the question we might <laughs> Which is... I thought done quite well. Do, do, we, do we? Well, it's a good commentary on Brexit. Yeah. Um, oh, do, do the panel think yes. that this will have a serious inflationary effect yes. on the price of housing? Yes, I do. Because I think I think actually I know we've said that you know the price of houses prices can't keep going up, keep going up. But they do. But, but of course, new houses it, it is linked to new houses, and if building materials keep going up, they're going to have to charge more for new houses. However, that doesn't mean they're going to sell. Mm. Interesting point. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, Byron, have you got any comment on that? I mean, I know it's not really your sort of forte. But you're, you're, you're more commercial, man. But we, well, yeah, and we, and we sit um, and provide uh, security through CCTV technology and man guarding services on a lot of construction sites, and we've seen the requirement for our services spike yeah. in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a season you think to yourself you know why are people building houses yeah i you know, agree you know are they going to sell them mm -hmm. you know and you know have they got the materials to you know so to, to complete the sites so we've seen you know an increase in that but i don't know if that's because we're fortunate because we're good at marketing and, and, and we're, we're winning more than we're losing or whether it actually is a market footprint that resi development is the, is the, spiking the one thing we haven't i, I, th I think i think probably both in your case. I mean, what I would say is, is there's still the massive short housing shortage in the UK. And they're hoping to build 300,000 houses a year, hoping to, but they really need to build 500,000. So, you know, while that shortage is, is there. I but think, I, I think at the moment, 
what with COVID, what with Brexit, which we really haven't looked at for 18 months. No, we haven't looked at the effect. Um, I, I, I'd struggle to put much reliance on any of the stats coming out at the moment. We've got so many mm. different anomalies. We've got building sites that are now allowed to work Saturdays and Sundays, for instance. So the normal five day process yeah. of, in the construction process itself, hard to gauge because yeah. you're now operating seven days, yeah. not five. Um, We've got a housing market that's all of a sudden stronger than people thought it would be. Yep. The government seemed to be saying that's because people have been locked down, they're bored with their environment, and, yep. and this surge is manifesting itself because people are just fed up of where think, they've but been. I think you're right. So and, it's and difficult to judge it's anything. It's a very unusual situation. Wh think, whatever yeah. market space you're looking at, whether it's residential or commercial, uh, manufacturing, construction, we are in still unique we're in, times. We're in new, but we are, it's all very unique. But one thing we do know is prices are going up. Absolutely. Uh, but, and but that I think will affect but it, all the way down the line, inflation yeah. and so on. But, and, but I think you know, to look at something now, that's not a real trend. No, I agree. You know, it needs we, to be over gotta, a period of time. we just yeah. got to... Calm down and yeah. just uh, and be careful what you buy. Agreed. OK, well, on that note, that's all we've got time for in this half of the show. So join Byron, John and myself after the break. Hello and welcome back to part two of Property Question Time. I'm sitting here with um, Byron Crellin, CEO of Debt Squared Group, and John Howard, property developer. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right, your second questions are Byron. With serious waiting times to have rent arrears cases heard in court, do the panel think that some kind of fast track facility needs to be introduced by the government? Landlords are likely to run themselves into serious debt themselves if something isn't done. What well, do you think? First of all, landlords are in debt <laughs> uh, and have been because there's reportedly over six billion pounds worth of unpaid rent in the UK as a result of COVID. Um, you know, but let's break that down. We've got businesses that have failed as a result of being closed. We've had the hospitality sector closed and told to stay closed. Um, we've got organisations, individuals that have abused the situation. Yes. Um, so, you know, all of that in, in, the, in the round, we're going to have arrears and we're going to have a spiky set of arrears because of the pandemic how that washes through. So we've got legislation in place at this moment in time that protects businesses. We've got a consultation period that's now been completed by the government, this call for evidence, which um, both retail um, uh, landlords, uh, myself, all contributed um, with the shared um, appetite and intention to provide the government with some clear guidance in terms of, look, this is what the situation is and we need to do something with it. And unfortunately, what's come out of the consultation is confusion and no clear lines. So the government have got effectively six buckets of, of scenarios. Do we keep the regulations and extend again at the end of March? I think that's, that's a nightmare situation for a landlord to even consider. Do we? Do you mean the restriction on evictions? On evictions and the ability to enforce for rent. Mm -hmm. So look through the traditional enforcement agent. You've got options to say, well, actually, what we want to do is we want to put the restriction, keep the restriction on the commercial rent, but allow insolvency proceedings now to commence. We've got take all the restrictions away and just go for it. There's the government. They're going. The government are going to have to work smart on this. What the government have said is they're going to bring in new legislation and again I've got no crystal ball on this but what what is coming out of, of the government is that if the hospitality trade was forced to be closed they were, and they remain closed through the COVID, any rent arrears will be ring fenced. Legislation will be introduced that will prevent any landlord from taking any recovery action against those arrears for that period of time. And that's including insolvency proceedings. But you see, at the end of the, at the end of the day, it's not the government, is it? it it's taxpayers who are going to have to support this. John? Well, I mean, you know, if I look at our, I mean, we have managing agents, we have commercial landlords. You know, if we're if we're acting for managing agents, 
we've got we have a strange scenario. We're acting for a client, and the landlord is the pension trust, yeah. and the tenant is it's, is the landlord. Is the landlord, yeah. and he's in default of his SIP account. Yeah. And scratching his head, going, "This is pre-COVID." This is, and there's, going, a, there's a few I'm like in, that about. I'm in arrears. Yeah. Of to, my myself, own, to myself. To myself. My own pension. Yeah. So, so therefore, can I disinstruct you? And we're like, "Yeah." And that doesn't work like that. No. You know, so so anyway, so bizarre. But, but so I think um, I don't think there's going to be a, a fast track for evictions. I think the government will basically allow an element of arrears to be enforceable. Uh, I think they'll allow the eviction, the repossession, the forfeiture of leases to be reintroduced. But I think there's going to be criteria around it. I think there's going to be there's going to have to be a certain amount of uh, uh, arrears days outstanding. It can't be easy in default. But the so. sim the but simple it, solution would be to have a sort of um, uh, an assessment, if you like, of the o uh, of the overall solvency of the company. So if if rent arrears get past taking the company past a certain level of, of solvency or insolvency, whichever well, this is what way the you look at it, about. Yeah. So yeah. the government are talking about uh, a new piece of legislation, arbitration, where if a landlord and tenant cannot agree, they are forced into this um, arbitration legislation. It, now, I know, I know. <laughs> I, now, you know, it's, it's, it's got to be... The, the, the real concern, and I'm sitting representing both sides on this, and that's that you're going to have uh, an independent person regulated by the FCA or something listening to your side, Madness. listening to your side, and then making a ruling on this. Are they, so, are they, are, are they doing a, a forensic investigation on the insolvency aspect of this business? Okay, they're offering to make a payment, but I mean, what's when, the longevity when, of it? when you listen to what you're saying, Go back 18 months, and people would would think there's something wrong with you. Well, working from home. I, you, know. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. That you listen to this. We're all talking like, oh, we're going to let land, we're going to let tenants off off hundreds of thousands of rents, and the government are going to stop us being able to claim it. And it's madness. Surely, if there's a legal agreement between two parties, and one party does not pay, what the government can't say. <laughs> no. What the what the government can't say is. We've pumped over £80 billion pounds into the UK. What we can't do is say, right, from next Thursday, yeah, landlords, yeah. get on with it. Yeah. Wow. Because they've done that to keep businesses open, to ring fence them, to allow them to come back. But where does it stop? Is the question. That is it? the question. And, and out of that £80 billion and how many tens of thousands of companies that have been helped, how many have genuinely warranted that help? And how many have Tried been... Tried it on tried it on, played a bit of a game or, or, or whatever. It's very difficult. It's the same with the bounce back loans, isn't it? I mean, you, you, you talk to your local Porsche dealers or, uh, and whoever, as soon as the bounce back loans came in, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of them were, were, were buying cars and, yep. and, and, and one thing or another. My hairdresser's got a new car. Right, okay, well, there you go. Um, all right, anyway, we must move on. So um, not quite sure we answered that question um, well, think, totally, but well, um, we, 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 we certainly had some food for thought. I, I think, I think yeah. we, we are, we, we've got no crystal ball, no. turbulent no. times. No. No. Something's going to change, but we don't quite know what. Agreed. And the government have got a tough, tough job. On tough, tough job, yeah. yeah. Okay. Do any of the panel involved in development or construction feel that building materials are increasingly... Um, the cost of building materials is, is increasing significantly since we left the EU. If we are to increase housing stock, we do need to maintain a consistent and cost-effective le level of supply. I mean, I go back, I think, 10 or 15 years since we really had this trouble. I, I don't know why materials went short then, but they did. And I know in London it, it was terribly inflationary. Mm -hmm. But not too worried about London. There's other places. Is it? Where? Can I answer the question? Well, you can do. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, first of all, 70% of building, building materials come from Europe. Mm. That's the first problem you've got. 70%. Mm. Now, the whole point of Brexit is that more things are manufactured in the UK. And that will happen, but it will take a bit of time. That's the first thing. Um, on top of that, we've had COVID where um, none, of these, none of these big factories have been open, say for brick making and so on. So what's happened is since we've gone back, everyone, every, all the developments that were sort of on hold during lockdown are all full on, they all want, so it's a very unique situation. And, and it's and so unique that there's no stockpiles anywhere, as we said before. So all the materials are going from the factory straight out, still warm probably if they're bricks, straight to the builders. 
They, 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 there's no middle middlemen with stockpiles or anything else. And of course, what's happening is these, some of these building merchants are taking advantage of it hugely and charging a lot more. And they're saying, look, if you want the bricks in a month, it's so much. If you can wait three months, it's so much. And that's what's happening. Now, what they're saying is that once the stockpiles are back up again, which will take six to 12 months, then the cost of materials will go down again. Mm. But when so have you ever known- catch up though? Well, that's it. I mean, at the moment, I would say they're struggling to pay catch up. Mm. But of course, we've got Christmas lockdown to have to build constructions, things like that. So hopefully, if they've got any sense, they'll, be, they'll work all the way through Christmas, these, these, uh, the, these factories and build up a stockpile because there just isn't any, it's just so well, hard to I, get I'd quite like Brian's comment on one of the previous um, questions where he said, you know, just everybody calm down. Because actually, yeah. even if building materials go up today for developers, it's two years before you actually see the final pricing yeah. for any, Depress, a, any yeah. development. Depress me. Another two well, years. Well, I've got I know, but, Thank you. But yeah. But, but the, fact, the fact is, even if building materials have gone up today, you're going to have other pressures on you in two years' time. It, may, it might be the economy. Yeah, it might it be mortgage be. supply. But, it might be the, anything. You but, know, so but, but the property market is in a unique situation at the moment because of this. You know, um, how do we va how you put a price on bill costs because you don't know what the cost of materials are going to be so what's happening is um, uh, cautious developers like ourselves investors uh, are, are putting the price of the bill cost up so much that none of these deals that we brought really work and that's the problem and 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 the owners of these these sites and so on won't accept less money because they they're in denial now they're saying it's short term, we're saying it probably isn't. At some point, the stars will realign, but at mm. the moment, it's very difficult. And I don't want to make any more, I don't want to make any mistakes if I can mm. help it. Yeah. So it's very difficult. It makes you, it gives you a very negative mentality when you're unsure. And, and, but it's the right thing to do to be cautious. Okay. All right. Well, on that note, um, we're going to have to end the show. That's all we've got time for. So a big thank you to John Howard and uh, Byron Cronin. Thank you both very much for coming in Pleasure. Today. Great answers as always. Join me again next time on Property Question Time.